fasten your seatbelts because today's video is going to be a bumpy ride. We're talking about guns in Destiny 2 and skill. Wait, do those two words even belong in a sentence together? Well, you clicked on this video. Perhaps you came here just to argue. Or perhaps you're hoping that I'm going to say your favorite weapon is skillful. Or maybe you just want a new challenge in PvP. To be clear, we're offering weapons which offer you as a player a lot of growth potential and an appropriate reward. So while technically you can get good at achieving an optimal kill time with the Graviton Lance for example, the 1 second kill time is simply not good enough to warrant the effort. On the flip side, something like the Lorenz Driver is incredibly powerful, though the skill requirement is questionable. I'm also not saying that these are the 10 best guns in the game. There's a lot of merit to ease of use and sometimes that can be the difference between winning or losing a fight. Also, I have something special for you. With every weapon on our list, I'm going to be giving out a little challenge. That's right, I'm going to be challenging you to fulfill the maximum potential of our skillful weapons. Pick one of these guns and tag me with your best clip over on Twitter. With that, I think that we've cleared any potential confusion, so lean back and get your comments ready. Do you agree that these are the most skillful weapons in Destiny 2? Or did I miss your favorite weapon which totally takes a lot of skill? But before we get into questioning your skill with guns, let me ask you, how skilled are you with a knife? How about a chef's knife? Because today's video sponsor is HelloFresh. Hey, Valentine's Day is right around the corner and maybe you want to impress that special guardian in your life. Or hey, maybe you just want to treat yourself, I'm not here to judge. But with HelloFresh you can skip the crowded restaurants and prepare a delicious three course meal from the comfort of your own home. It's super easy because they have fresh pre-portioned ingredients to help you limit your meal prep time and spend less time in the grocery store. For me, this is a huge game changer because I do like to cook but by the time I'm done with the usual prep, I'm about ready for a nap. The recipes are delicious and they offer new stuff each week to help keep you out of a rut. And they have a ton of different options so no matter what kind of diet you like to follow, I bet you can probably find something that's a perfect fit. Produce gets delivered from the farm to your doorstep in under a week so you know you're always getting stuff when it's fresh. If you're short on time, they also offer a number of 20 minute meals with super easy cleanup. And you can feel good about your box because it's coming in recycled packaging and the ingredients are all pre-portioned so there's nothing to waste. If this sounds like a good deal, then use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGPATTYCAKE16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 surprise gifts across 6 HelloFresh boxes with free shipping. Gifts include free appetizers, free desserts, and free premium recipes. Thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring and I'm excited to hear some stories about you honing those knife skills. Now let's get back to the list. Okay, okay, I know hand cannons tend to ooze with aim assist and this one's no exception. So why did a hand cannon make it onto this list? Well, Hawkmoon might give away free headshots, but to unlock its full potential, you need to land 7 headshots with at most 1 miss or 1 body shot. Yes, the hand cannon holster mod does allow you to uno reverse some missed shots, but that takes your hand cannon out of the picture for a long time. But there's also a lot more than just the strict accuracy requirement. A skilled player is not only able to get the paracausal charges needed to deliver that one shot kill, but they're also able to decide on the fly who the most dangerous opponent is. This kind of player is going to collect stacks of their opponent to one shot body shot the guy who just picked up heavy. Alternatively, they can swiftly send that x7 paracausal snipe into an approaching super with an incredibly stylish way to end their destiny career. If you're encountering a lot of very passive playstyles but you don't want to give up your normal hand cannon, the Hawkmoon is probably the perfect answer for players who just don't want to commit to a duel. The longer your opponents wait to fully engage, the worse it becomes for them because meanwhile you're building up some stacks. And even if you don't get quite the maximum amount of stacks, you're still going to be able to exploit the lower stacks for some quick 2 taps. While this certainly isn't as flashy as one-shotting someone outright, you gotta realize that the two-tap time to kill comes as a big surprise since your enemy's gonna literally watch their entire health vanish only being shot twice. I think it's very agreeable that the Hawkmoon offers a lot of potential for personal skill growth. Honestly, if you want to step into the realm of skillful Destiny 2 gameplay, try out the Hawkmoon in your next gaming session and just remember these key numbers. First, if you have three stacks or more and two shots left on the magazine, you can two-tap. Second, if you have 6 stacks or more and 1 shot left in the magazine, you can 1 shot with a headshot. And finally, with 7 stacks, you're able to get a 1 shot body shot kill. If you decide to try your hands at the Hawkmoon, my challenge for you is to go into PvP and use the exotic perk to 1 shot a player who's playing very passively. Maybe it's someone hiding in their spawn, maybe it's someone camping in a damage resistance rift. Let them know that we're not sitting around for a boring crucible. Okay, here we have a hand cannon which for once doesn't give away absolutely free headshots. Honestly, this one's a quite forgotten one, but I feel it's still not too hard to get good with. I'm talking about the Sunshot, the last remaining 150 RPM hand cannon, and one that doesn't even get close to that 100 aim assist of most of the top dogs. Unfortunately, Sunshot has a very low 60 aim assist stat paired with a very large visual effect and some strong recoil. However, I think this might be a legitimate balancing act on the part of Bungie, because Sunshot is really powerful, maybe more powerful than all the other 140 RPM hand cannons in the right hands. Not only do you have an edge in the time to kill department, but Sunshot also intrinsically gets body shot activated Firefly and most importantly explosive payload. 
This means that Sunshine can output some major damage against multiple players while making it really hard for your opponent to land shots back on you. And that's basically my challenge for you. Send me a clip of your biggest Firefly collateral kill with the Sunshot. It's quite a pity that the Sunshot's barrier to entry is a bit higher than usual, which stops a lot of players from using it. But I think the Sunshot's higher RPM and the flinch output are a serious advantage. Explosive Payload is also a really elite perk on hand cannons. It's not as difficult to use as some of the other entries on this list, and I think it just needs a little bit more investment than your average hand cannon. And while we're talking about hand cannons, let's finish off with the infamous last word. Whoa, the last word? This thing? OMG patty cakes, how could you use such a busted gun against innocent guardians in the crucible? Well, what if I told you that this clip was actually recorded using mouse and keyboard? Ooh, now we're friends again. I'd be willing to bet that most of you discount the last word on mouse and keyboard as unusable, but I actually don't think you understand its true potential. After all, there's theoretically nothing stopping you from doing just as well as a controller player. Don't think that the last word has ghost bullets, that's really not the case. Well, at least until you start spamming and missing your shots. If you land your first shot and proc the exotic perk, you're pretty much guaranteed that your shots are going to go exactly where you aim them. To reiterate, your shots go exactly where you aim them. If you miss, that's on you. There's little to no magnetism that's going to save you. In essence, this is what makes the last word on mouse and keyboard so satisfying. I just love seeing my hours of aim training in PvP bearing fruits and rewarding me with one of the fastest primary weapon kill times. On mouse and keyboard, you can also quickly flick between your targets for a lot of total damage output if you're accurate enough. And this is exactly my challenge for you. Go get a double kill with the last word hitting only headshots but without reloading. This means you're going to need 6 headshots and no more than 2 misses. Our next weapon is the Dead Man's Tail. Wait a second, who the f wrote this shitty script? Oh wait, it's real. The Dead Man's Tail actually is a skillful weapon. You might point out that the DMT only needs 2 headshots and 1 body shot to kill and uh, I guess you'd be right. Also the DMT fires from 150 RPM from the hip. You might say, well Patty, doesn't that mean that the DMT is overpowered? Well, in fact, yes, I do kind of think it is. But the thing is, with the DMT, depending on your skill level, the DMT can go from just mildly busted to absolutely unstoppable. Well, almost unstoppable. There's actually just one other primary weapon which I think is a little bit stronger depending on your skill level, so stick around to figure out which one that is. The skill gap with the DMT comes down to the hipfire and its exotic catalyst. It's very easy to land good damage while you're aiming down sights, but it's quite a bit more difficult to aim the hipfire mode, especially at further ranges. Sure, the accuracy of the DMT recently did get a slight buff, but it's still much less forgiving than a typical hand cannon. In a 1v1 duel with two DMT users, the slightly better aimer will win more consistently. And while you can technically kill someone with two headshots and one body shot, a skilled player is going to go for those crispy three headshots. This would activate Cranial Spike, and then the player can absolutely destroy a large group of enemies by two tapping their opponents at blazing speed. This elevates the DMT from being just an overpowered dueling weapon to a devastating crowd control weapon with the potential to absolutely destroy an entire team. In Hipfire, the two tap time to kill is just about as fast as the messenger landing all headshots with Desperado active. So I challenge you to be a skilled DMT user. Send me your clips of your biggest DMT only multi kills. I'm looking for some crispy headshots to satisfy the two tap kills with Cranial Spike. No cheating with Empowering Rifts or other damage boosters for this one. But let's take a look at some special weapons. I know it's hard to believe that a special weapon can have a skill gap, but bear with me. I'm talking about two specific sniper rifles depending on your style, the Frozen Orbit and the Cloud Strike. Sure, we all know that a sniper rifle needs just one precise click to kill your opponent instantly at any range. And yes, part of the skill gap with these two comes down to just being a sniper rifle. They punish bad aim much more than something like a pellet shotgun or a fusion rifle. But actually, there's a second key reason that I picked the Frozen Orbit and the Cloud Strike. Let's start with the Frozen Orbit, can you guess why I picked it? Well, that would be Kill Clip. I know what you might be thinking, isn't it more skillful to land a headshot than a body shot? Well, you'd be 100% right, but in this case, I feel like the body shot is a reward for a different kind of skill. In the case of the Frozen Orbit, you're being rewarded on one hand because of your build crafting. After all, it has an abysmal 28 handling set which you do need to fix because the slot of snapshot is already taken. And on the other side, you're being rewarded for your situational awareness. With this role, you're going to have to manage your angles quickly. You need to get that initial headshot, reload, and then search for your next opponent. Skilled players will be able to wipe teams before any of the opponents even show their heads behind a corner. This can condition your opponent to start running as soon as they see you get a kill in the kill feed. In a similar sense, the Cloud Strike offers a lot of reward for some build making investment concerning the handling set. It's a 140 RPM sniper, meaning you need a headshot to get a kill, otherwise it's 3 body shots, and you're going to require 2 headshots to kill a super. Your reward though is the potential for some massive multi kills off of just one snipe. And it's not just that, if you think about team play, being good with the Cloud Strike means you can condition your opponents to never peek together or else they'll get collectively deleted. 
Especially in a primary gunplay and team shot focused meta, this can be devastating against even very well coordinated teams. With just one bullet, you can throw all their coordination out of the window and require them to challenge you one by one. Personally, I'm really happy to see some sniper rifles make it onto this list. Longtime viewers will probably know my obsession with sniper rifles. Admittedly, I do prefer the 90 RPM variants, but both of these are some of the most rewarding snipers out there and they can have a very strong impact on the enemy's confidence when challenging duels. My challenge for you on this one is quite simple. I want to see your most montage-worthy sniper clips on Twitter. Let's talk about a more obscure option, the Suros Regime. I'm not sure if you knew, but it's actually one of my favorite weapons in Destiny 2. Admittedly, the Suros is kind of a niche pick as auto rifles aren't exactly the strongest weapons nowadays. Back when auto rifles were buffed, the Suros was ridiculously powerful with an absolutely crazy time to kill once you got it firing up at the max RPM. Today though, auto rifles are much more balanced and their critical problem is they can't really hold their ground against the better burst damage options. But I feel like a skilled player should still be able to avoid this problem while using the Suros regime, specifically with the perk spinning up. I know Dual Speed Receiver did recently get a buff, but unfortunately I think it doesn't offer quite the same potential for skill growth. As a quick side rant, I really wish we could hold the reload button to swap between these different firing modes. To me this would be an amazing quality of life buff for the Suros that would help it substantially in the meta. Auto rifles have quite a steep skill gap because you need to perfectly track the head of your opponent for a long time. If you miss or only hit body shots, you're going to extend your kill time and most likely you're going to end up losing the duel. This also remains true for the Suros, but to exploit spinning up to its maximum potential, you're going to want to transfer that tracking from one player to another. Take a close look at this clip in the background. Watch how I flick between the two players to absolutely melt the second guy with a faster RPM. Seeing my hours spent in aim trainers practicing my tracking and switching aim pay off like that is just so satisfying. Suros really rewards good tracking aim with a fast kill time and some excellent multi-kill potential. It's really one of the most skillful auto rifles to use in the game, which is why I enjoy it so much. In this sense, I also want you to try your hand at target switching in Destiny 2. My challenge for you is to get a quick double kill while spinning up without ever lifting your finger off of the trigger. Speaking of auto rifles, another criminally underrepresented yet very skillful and powerful option is the Tommy's Matchbook. A few months ago, I even made a video specifically about the Tommy's Matchbook. I felt the community just wasn't giving it enough credit. Don't worry though, you don't have to go anywhere. I got you covered here with everything you need to know about the Matchbook. It's a rapid fire auto with a really large magazine size and a spicy exotic perk. Holding on the trigger for 20 shots is going to overheat Tommy's. This will give it a much, much faster kill time, but it also slowly chips down at your health. Tommy's secondary perk reduces the damage you take if you're hip firing the matchbook. It would be really convenient if the Tommy's coincidentally also had perfect hip fire accuracy. Oh, wait, it does. I think you can probably see a trend here. Basically, all of our hip fire only weapons offer a lot of skill growth potential, which isn't too surprising. Hip fire offers many benefits like permanent radar, a wider field of view, and faster strafing speed but it often takes away that crazy aim assist we experience when we're aiming down sights. This gives players a lot of room for personal skill growth. So Bungie, if you're listening, please give us some more cool hipfire weapons. Anyway, back to the matchbook. Clearly, it gets a few skill points for its hipfire ability, but really that's not all. The burn mechanic also allows for a lot of skill growth. It really is a high risk, high reward proposal. If you let the Tommies burn for too long, you're going to chip down your own health and get killed by basically anything. But if you don't use the exotic perk, you're getting less damage output. So the skill gap of the matchbook comes down to that fragile timing. You need to challenge your opponent with perfect timing to get that maximum effect. Alternatively, you can also kill your first opponent with just normal damage and then keep firing to melt that second opponent. It's a very effective way to punish players who try to peek shot you because while they're taking their time behind cover, Tommy's is going to start burning. Then when they re-peek, it's time to melt them. Also, the faster strafe speed while you're hip firing can be really annoying to deal with. In any case, I think there's a lot of playmaking potential and room for personal skill growth with the Tommy's Matchbook, so I'm challenging you to send me your best multi-kills with the Matchbook, ideally using the Exotic perk and showing off some hipfire accuracy. Let's whip over to the heavy slot and discuss the real linear fusion rifles. No no no, I said the real linear fusion rifles. Nope, not that one, I mean the real linear fusion rifles. Yep, that's what I meant, the legendary LFRs, and more specifically this Reed's Regret. Shocker, this one has hipfire grip. Okay, I'm joking, but at this point in the video, I think you might be more shocked to know that I chose Adagio. This logic is actually very similar to the Frozen Orbit. After the initial kill, Adagio will land your next kill with just a body shot. And with Hipfire Grip, you can quite consistently no-scope people. Come on, how can you not like no-scoping? It's just so fun. Also, don't think that there's no reward for using a Linear Fusion Rifle. Most of the usual heavy weapons get at most 1 or 2 shots per heavy brick, but the Linear Fusion Rifles get 5 instead. This means that if you can take a little bit of time to aim those massive hitboxes on the linears, you're going to get rewarded with more kills than you would with something like a rocket launcher. Eh, there is the Wardcliffe coil, you sure about that? Well, at least you'll get your kills more consistently. Okay, well, don't do that, but instead, go send me your clips of your best killing sprees with the linear fusion rifles. 
Okay, we're down to the last two skillful weapons, and I've kept the best for last. At number 9, we have one that might surprise you, the Fighting Lion. Honestly, I struggled at first putting this one on the list. I guess a part of me, well, a big part of me, just despises grenade launchers in Destiny PvP. In many ways, I wish they were never added to the game. But at the same time, I have a number of friends who absolutely decimate unsuspecting lobbies with the Fighting Lion. This exotic grenade launcher only requires primary ammo, and primary ammo is now unlimited in all Destiny 2 activities. As you can probably imagine, having infinite ammo with a grenade launcher that can endlessly lob projectiles around corners is pretty powerful in many PvP situations. You might be thinking, but wait a second Patty, you said this video was all about high skill weapons. Where exactly is the skill in spamming grenades around a corner? And I'd agree with you on that point. It doesn't exactly take the OG Hanzo's simple geometry skills to land hits with a lion while you're spamming. Although landing lion hits under pressure with a lengthy reload timer is not quite as easy as you might think. There's a skill gap in learning the projectile timing and nailing the angles around corners on demand. After all, the Fighting Lion is one of the few weapons in the game with the ability to output some very high damage amount but without the necessity of direct line of sight. Back in the day, the Hardlight did kind of the same thing with its extremely powerful ricochet rounds, but those have since been nerfed. The only remaining one is the Fighting Lion. With a recent buff to its exotic perk, you basically get maxed out reload speed if you just tag an enemy with a grenade. And in addition to this, the exotic catalyst gives the Lion the perk Chimera, which will buff your kinetic weapon's handling and accuracy after it fires. This means you can do wild stuff like this, quite consistently. And this is where I think the true skill gap comes in with the Lion. The ability to pair its grenade damage with another attack to hit almost instantaneously together. My friend Kamikakes pioneered the Snipe Lion combo where he pairs a high impact sniper rifle with the Lion. This opens up the ability to land a grenade hit to prime and then finish with a sniper rifle body shot. Or you can land a sniper body shot to send someone running around the corner to heal only to eat a Lion grenade hit and die. A hit with a Fighting Lion is going to land you anywhere from 20 to 120 damage depending on how accurate you are. The high chip damage can really make a difference in a duel. My friend Kami isn't the only one dominating lobbies with the Lion. My friend Yerda is a monster with this playstyle as well, and Pippin, who's the co-host of the Massive Breakdown podcast, has an insane number of kills in Trials of Osiris with the Lion. And then, there's this guy. A player by the name of Epic Defender who pairs the Fighting Lion with another grenade launcher to dish out some true pain. If you ever see him in your lobby, you might want to consider bouncing. It's truly one of the most difficult playstyles to counter as you have two grenades coming your way constantly. With over 50,000 grenade launcher kills in PvP and nearly a 3kd overall, I'd say it's a setup that's working quite well. So give it a try the next time you're gaming. It's not as easy as it seems, especially considering you're giving up the ability to use a more traditional weapon in one of your two slots. Having infinite ammo, the Lion can potentially be a game-winning weapon in a close match between two similar skilled teams. A very accurate Lion player can easily wipe a team that's not respecting those ricochet angles. I don't know if I should challenge you to use the Lion or not, I feel like if all of you use it together it might actually break the Crucible and Bungie has enough headaches to deal with. And drumroll please, the number one most skillful weapon but at the same time most busted weapon in Destiny 2 is the one, the only, the Messenger. While the rest of this list isn't necessarily in any order, I have to put the Messenger at the very top. This thing just slays lobbies like no other weapon in Destiny 2. That's thanks to the perk borrowed from the Regis Claymore and Broadsword, Desperado. It has awesome stats, a very clean scope, a really wide spectrum of effective ranges, the potential to reach one of the fastest primary weapon kill times in the entire game, the potential to deliver a lot of pain to many players, and the adept mod system for even more juice stats. I think it's quite obvious that the Messenger is one of the highest skill, highest reward weapons in all of Destiny 2. Once you get Desperado going, the lobby is going to run away in fear. I feel like in almost every video I make these days, the messenger appears at least once, and it's really no coincidence. If you want to find out why, I would urge you to hit the sub button, as I'm going to be sharing the secrets behind the messenger this month, and you really don't want to miss it. But for now, we can appreciate that the messenger is one of the highest skill, highest reward weapons in the game. If you have great aim, the messenger is going to reward it handsomely and give you the power to single-handedly turn the tide of a match. My challenge for you is to send me your cleanest, crispiest two bursts with the messenger and then go on a spree with Desperado active. What's that? You actually like one of these skillful weapons and you're going to try out one of my challenges? You're about to actually have some fun in Destiny? Well, I salute you for that. Go out there and enjoy your time in the Crucible. If you also enjoyed this video, maybe make my day a little bit happier by hitting the like button. And up next, I think you'd enjoy my video on 30 weapons I'd keep if Bungie blew up my vault. It's a video on the top right of your screen and also linked in the description.